Welcome to the garage. We're back again with another Ford Sierra Scorpio technical video. I was just carrying on with my Ford Sierra Sapphire 4x4 project. And uh, again, just like the last time, went ahead and just pulled out all of my Sierra and Scorpio subframes I had laying around. The reason for doing that is I want to choose the best subframe for my Sierra. And uh, we'll go through all of them to discuss them a little, see what they got in common and what are the differences between them. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. As we know, the Sierras and Scorpios have much in common. The good thing is they have many parts in common or at least interchangeable. So you might be wondering which of the subframes will fit your Sierra. At least that's what I'm wondering about here. So first of all, let's cover the similarities between all the subframes. Of course, the first obvious condition for a subframe fitting on your car is the mounting positions. So let's cover those. These subframes come fitted on the three places, let's say. First two places are these mounting points here, which come fitted inside here. This car has been obviously restored and I've done much welding around here, but the points are exactly the same as on the original Sierra. So these are two points here and inside there, there is a welded nut. So you just go ahead, take this, put the subframe on and just bolt it on here like so. See, in between here, there comes the subframe mounting point. So this is for the front end. On the back end, the whole subframe is mounted with this mount here. It is mounted on the differential and it holds the whole thing up. You see, we got four holes here and also we got four holes here see again we got some nuts on there and we bolt the bracket straight in there about the mounting points the good news are that they are you guessed it all pretty much the same i've actually went and measured all of them like so and they all say 94 centimeters from uh, the outer edges of these mounting points the dimensions of these inserts are also all the same. And they're around 20.5 millimeters. First of all, let's see just what subframes we got here. As per usual, we'll start on the base spec Sierras and then make our way to the Scorpios. So uh, let's start here. This one is from a base spec Sierra, two liter with a double overhead cam engine. Then we have one from Sierra Estate 1.6i with monopoint injection, CVH engine that is. Then we got uh, one from a Sierra XR 4x4. We got one from Scorpio Mark 1 and one from Scorpio Mark 2 Cosworth. Now another thing about mounting the subframes on is that the Sierras, as you might have seen, have different brackets here. See, this bolt pattern is different and this bracket is much smaller. So if you want to use a Scorpio subframe, you should just change them over. See, this uh, rubberized thing, you should swap them over and you should be okay. Now the next thing some of these have in common is this subframe part uh, without everything around it so this part only this is going to be the same for the base models that's sierra 2 liter 1.8 1.6 etc so this one and this one will be exactly the same the sierra xr 4x4 is a bit different which is also evident on the serial number that we got right over here it is a little different but other than lack of these two holes on the xr 4x4 see it doesn't have them i didn't really see any difference in the subframe itself another difference might be that these have a welded on exhaust holding the bracket while this one doesn't have one but uh, it might have been cut off so <laughs> i'm not 100 percent there moving on we got the Scorpio Mark 1 subframe. Now we get to the differential side of things. This one 
has also got a different part number than all of these here and that's pretty much because the mounting points for the differential are different that's because this differential is 7.5 inch differential while all of these are 7 inch differential so of course these mounting points are different you see the differential visually is a bit bigger than these but as far as i managed to research it the internals shouldn't be any stronger on the bigger ones and then we got the scorpio mark ii cosworth one this one as you can see is much much different than all of those in the basis it is the same shape of course as the mounting points and everything are the same but we do have some reinforcements here as well see so this one should be a bit stiffer but also heavier and that's because this pipe here or this part is much thicker than all the other ones we can actually measure it real quickly this one is around 68 this one is the same of course 68 this one the same as well 68 scorpio mark 1 68 and this one check this out 84 84 it isn't round really and 73 in this direction so that's that Now with the subframes themselves taken care of, we can go ahead and take a look at the trailing arms. We got a couple of versions of these. Now these here are the base spec ones. We see that they don't have any reinforcements back there. You see this one in comparison to this one. For example, this one has this little triangle. And also it hasn't got any mounting points for the anti-roll bar in the back, which we see here. See, this is the anti-roll bar, but we'll get around that quick enough. And uh, that's it actually. Other than that, the mounting points are the same. And also, of course, all the mounting points for the brake lines and everything. They're all the same. Now moving on to the state version. We can quickly see these ones are a bit differently shaped, see? That's because the Sierra Estate has some kind of a stoppers here. And I think if you really load up the car, this here will actually touch onto the chassis, like in some commercial vehicle, you know? So they don't hit anything except for that rubber that comes placed here. Also, this one has uh, differently placed shock absorbers and uh, while still having a spring here, of course, just like this one, this one has the dampers inside the spring, opposed to this one having them outside of the spring here in the back and onto the chassis. So these mounting points are different on the state version, of course. So as you can see, these aren't really interchangeable because you don't have the mounting point for the damper behind here and vice versa. But if you want it, you could swap over the brakes. As you can see, this one has drum brakes, some big drum brakes at that. But if you want to swap them over, the bolt pattern here is actually the same for the drum brakes as well as the disc brakes but saying that i think you should also change the differentials because here on the base spec model you do have different drive shafts this one you just plug in and uh, yeah you can actually should pull it right here you know it goes right through here and then inside the differential and here inside this thing of course while on this estate version and also as we'll see on the other higher specs models you have these drive shafts which you can actually you know like uh, separate see like so you just separate them on the differential flange and uh, just pull them out and while these bolt patterns here are the same the bearing surfaces and everything are different you can see in comparison these are much different see also the bearings and everything these aren't really interchangeable so uh better just get like a whole thing if you are swapping drum to disc brakes for example moving on we got the xr 4x4 subframe as we've seen on these trailing arms 
we do have the mounting points for this anti-roll bar here you see these are just on the kind of uh, rubbers here and you just plug them on here and the anti-roll bar is just mounted onto the chassis directly here with these brackets and rubbers and that's pretty much the only difference between the arms between the base spec and the xr 4x4 as i mentioned before looking at this reinforcement looking at it again i think this might be just a different version for the ones that have disc brakes originally as you see you have this hole here for the brake line while here you don't really need it right if you have the drums so this one since it doesn't have that reinforcement might be just uh, that it has been swapped before see because i do have a couple of disc equipped trailing arms here and they both have this kind of shape here see and yeah as you can see here you have this hole for the brake line so i guess that's the reason for that so that's that we talked about the drive shaft before and uh, i actually checked and these drive shafts you know the ones that can be separated here uh, are the same for the xr 4x4 and this variant here in our case the state version i will include the original part numbers in the description if you're interested moving on regarding the trailing arms on this scorpio mark one again we have the same disc equipped shape here on the trailing arms with these holes for the brake lines except here we do have the mounting points for the anti-roll bar on different place you see this one has them right here on the outer side and this one has them on the inner side also needless to say this anti-roll bar is much thicker but also shorter we can actually measure them but you couldn't really make a direct comparison because this one is much much wider or longer than that one 14.2 and this one is 17 all right so that's that interestingly enough the scorpio mark ii has the same shape of the swing arms as the estate version you see and i guess this one has also had some kind of rubbers here or something you know to hold against in a case of some big jump for example now this anti-roll bar is even thicker we got 21 millimeters here so that's that a uh, lot of informations here i'm trying to you know kind of think about everything important here okay we can also just measure the overall width of a fully assembled subframe because the scorpios being wider cars have a bit wider track width so we can actually go and measure this like so this pretty much goes to the outer edge of the disc on the xr 4x4 and all the other ones i've checked even on the drums you got 152 so that's for these three and now we can actually check on the scorpio here scorpio mark 1 153 what about the scorpio mark 2 all right this one is much wider this one is 155.5 oh another thing i forgot about the trailing arms the base spec model doesn't have the holes here for the abs sensors of course it doesn't even have the encoder wheel on the drive shafts but still you know if you'll be swapping the swing arms it's something to keep in mind here see this estate version seems to be a higher spec one so it has the hole here of course xr 4x4 has doesn't have the hole be because this swing arm is off of a base model see doesn't have the hole and here this is the original one and it has the hole here ha <laughs> yeah i see now this anti-roll bar bracket has been welded on additionally see it's welded in kind of weird way see it just uh, it looks weird so yeah that's that that's for using a bunch of used thrown together parts right <laughs> another major difference between scorpio one and all the others is the bolt pattern here for the wheels this one has five bolts while all the others including the scorpio mark ii have four bolts 108 millimeters circle 
Well, this has five of them. As I see it, the main cause of this uh, Scorpio subframe being one centimeter wider is that it has thicker flanges here, you see? It's five millimeters thicker than these ones of Sierra. So actually this should be the same until here and this thicker flange makes for a wider track. All right, I think I covered pretty much everything. If not, go ahead, ask me anything in the comments. I will go ahead and measure it for you if you need anything. But as far as my subframe choice for my Sierra goes, I'll be actually choosing between these two. That's the XR 4x4 one and Scorpio Mark 1 subframe. The first and the most important part is that the gear ratios are the same as on the front differential I have for the 4x4 Sierra. This one's also got the exact same ratio and that's 3.62. I've measured them all and I'm certain about it. Now the differentials are a whole subject for itself, but regarding the subframe choice, I'm actually liking this one more. First of all, I got plenty of drive shafts in stock if some of them goes bad because these drive shafts are different of course because the differential is different also given the differentials are pretty much the same on the inside they both are lsd differentials which is top notch and also i really don't like having this five bolt pattern in the back while having four bolt pattern in the front another thing the brakes here these calipers are exactly the same the numbers are the same and that's 0658 slash 4 and uh, by the way yeah those are all the same on scorpio 1 and on the disc equipped sierras the scorpio 2 is totally different also about the stronger anti-roll bar on the scorpio that's very easily modifiable you know i can just weld a couple of brackets here and mount the anti-roll bar somewhere on the car wherever it lands you know and that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content and want to follow along the Sierra project here, make sure to subscribe to the channel, ring that bell and everything, and I'll see you in the next one. Be good.